So what are the relationship patterns that adult children of alcoholics tend to fall into? My name is Sophia Voss. Welcome to my channel where I talk about growing up in a dysfunctional home, attachment styles, and other things psychology. I have identified six relationship patterns that adult children of alcoholics fall into. They are the, uh, I will take on the blame pattern. It's all my fault. Don't abandon me. Loving and available people. I will give, you will take, mind reading fantasy pattern, finding fixer uppers, and I can't be vulnerable. So I'm making a separate video for each one of these patterns. So subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for all the videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about the loving unavailable people pattern. And you can also check out my eight week course for adult children of alcoholics where I go into more details about these relationship patterns. And I also give you specific homework assignments that you can do on your own. So loving and available people pattern, how do you know that you fall into this pattern? You have a consistent uh, history of falling in love with people who are married or unavailable. Like they live in a different country or they travel a lot and uh, th they're maybe not committing to a relationship with you. So they are somehow unavailable either physically or emotionally. So the reason why that adult children fall into this pattern is because they have not learned openness and vulnerability in their early interactions with their parents. So that is partially not their value. Uh, so, you know, growing up in a home, adult children didn't have the opportunity to share their feelings, to have a compassionate, empathic adult listen to them, to build a relationship based on trust and based on compassion. So that is not, that is not something that, th those things might scare adult childhood of an alcoholic. It's something that they might not necessarily find attractive not something that they're attracted to. And the other reason why this happens is because adult children have to play roles. You have to monitor your environment to figure out the best way that you can appropriate yourself for survival and for less conflict. And also, they watch their parents possibly play roles because their parents could be one person at home, different person at work, uh, different person with their friends, all these different characters in a relationship. And so there's a need, space is on an unconscious level attractive. So you might hear a lot of people complaining about this, right? But the reason why you fall into this pattern is because you're attracted to it, because somewhere on an unconscious level, you feel that you need space. And the reason why you might feel that you need space is because you feel that if people really got to know you, they wouldn't like you. Putting on a mask, playing a character uh, is exhausting. And you can do it for a short period of time with people, and you can actually really enjoy yourself in that character, but it's pretty impossible to maintain it long term. And so adult children of alcoholics also feel really um, guilty if they're in a bad mood, or they're, or, or they're sad, or they're angry, or depressed. A lot of times they want to isolate. And so being in an ongoing relationship where you spend a lot of time with people is a threat to that. And um, also, the other reason why this happens is that abandonment feeling. So if you're dating someone, let's say, who's married, you already kind of know chances are this relationship is not going to go anywhere and it's going to end. And so feeling that control, like I already know where this is going, feeling like you know what's going to happen um, can give a feeling of peace versus a relationship with an available person. You don't know how long it's going to last. You don't know the kind of issues that are going to come up in a relationship or starting a relationship with an available person. What if they reject you? And then you'll have to feel bad about yourself. Those feelings of worthlessness might kick in. And so there's a real fear around, an unconscious fear could be around being attracted to people who are available coupled with the not having the value of um, being in an open and vulnerable and empathic relationship. So I'm going to give an example of a couple, Stephanie and John, to illustrate how something like this might happen. So Stephanie is a woman who wanted to have a serious relationship. She talks frequently about having a family and having children. And here she meets this person, John, 
through a friend. He's visiting town for two weeks. He's a digital nomad and he travels around all the time. And so they get together and um, he entertains her with stories and he shares with her that he can't imagine living in the same city and can't imagine having a nine to five job. And he doesn't ask her many questions. So he's entertaining her with the stories and she's really excited by him. He's unusual, he's handsome, he's interesting to listen to. And so there's an attraction and they end up you know, making love. And towards the end of his two week stay, he gives up his hotel and he stays with her and they have a great time together. So she's really excited about the prospect of this relationship. And he leaves and they text and he calls, but that contact gets more and more sparse in between. And um, she spends a year, you know, maintaining her feelings for John and also talking to him. And meanwhile, there's plenty of available men, right, that live in her city and her neighborhood that are interested in her. But she doesn't give them the time of day. She finds them boring. And uh, John comes back a year later and they spend a week together and she's excited again. And these kind of relationships can go on for years. You know, so why is this a problem? Ideally, it wouldn't be a problem if, um, you know, if Stephanie was not looking for a serious relationship, if she just enjoyed John and enjoyed spending time with him, didn't want anything more than that. Um, and, or maybe if she did, she could have opened herself to the possibility of other people as well. So... People that are attracted to these unavailable types can get hung up on this for years. And what this does is, is that it, it, it stops people from actually building relationships with available people. And um, the other thing is that the other factor they can play into this is like a redemption fantasy. So the person might feel that if this unavailable person all of a sudden becomes available to them, that it must mean that they have won their love by being so wonderful and perfect. And they have a fantasy that that will redeem their self-esteem, their feeling of self-worth. Now in this case with Stephanie and John, I bet that if John actually did make the change and he did move, uh, she would quickly get bored of him and the relationship would have been over. Uh, it's something that happens very frequently, that when the person actually does engage in a relationship with someone who loves these unavailable people, after some time, they, after the honeymoon phase, they all of a sudden begin to see other qualities they didn't see before. And also the fantasy of this person might not match up with their reality of being in a relationship with them. So, and there's, there, there's that excitement factor, right, with, with distant, distant partners. So, why, what to do about this in this scenario if you see yourself? So, this is one of the most difficult ones. The reason being is because we cannot control our attraction. Attraction is like a physiological process, and it is nearly impossible to change who we are attracted to. So, you find yourself in this constant pattern going to be really difficult to change. What you can do to change it is obviously work on yourself, um, work out this, the emotional support, the vulnerability, get deep into it. What do you think about it? Why do you think it's valuable? Why do you think it's invaluable? There's no right or wrong answer. Um, but how do you feel about um, being real with someone? What, what feelings does it bring up in you? How do you feel about supporting someone who also might be real with you? Uh, so that's one. Two is stop accepting uh, behavior that is unaligned with your values. So this, in this one, you really have to monitor yourself really have to monitor your attraction and what's going on in your body. So like, let's say you're on a date with someone. Notice when you begin to feel attracted to that person. Is it when you feel that they're distancing yourself from you? And this is like not to say like not to continue or, 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 tr or try out the relationship, but just monitor what's going on with you. Catch yourself in these moments. Aha, I'm getting attracted to this person because of this. You meet somebody, you learn that they actually live in a different country or in a different city. Do you feel a feeling of excitement? And if you do, there, this is not right or wrong. Just notice that in yourself. 
notice what attracts you and how your body feels, how, how you shift when you learn about these things. So, and the other thing is learn to not accept scenarios that are unacceptable, incompatible with where you're going in life. So let's say, um, let's say you, you, don't, you do want a long-term relationship, you do want closeness, you haven't had luck maybe achieving it or you have and it ended, but if that's something that you want and you find yourself attracted to someone who is unable to give it to you, learn to detach. Just detach yourself. Like if that person is unable to give that to you, detach. the more you're able to do that, the more you're going to be able to shift. So if you find yourself being attracted to these unavailable people, you really want to learn to get attracted to available, healthy people, learn to slowly shift. Just don't accept it. Don't engage in, in the relationships that are not going to give you joy. And once again, you are going to be attracted to those people, no matter what. And the people who are healthy and available are going to be difficult for you to like light up that spark. But the more you practice shifting yourself away from this, the unavail uh, unavailability, the more you will go towards the available healthy partners. Also, with the available healthy partners, you don't feel a spark, you know, give people a chance. Give them a few tries. Go on a few dates with them. Try to even, like, become friends with someone. Try to dig into their psyche. The other thing that can sometimes happen, you know, with, um, with adult children of alcoholics, and I'm going to be, you know, heteronormative here, but it's that, you know, whether it was your mother who was the alcoholic or your father who was the alcoholic, if it was the opposite sex, there's a chance that you have a hard time interacting with that opposite sex if you don't know what that opposite sex is about. So even like befriending people of the opposite sex who are available and are interested in you and just learning more about them, like interacting with them can actually help open up your world to the possibility of being in someone being with someone long term with whom you can build a trusting and vulnerable relationship with um, getting into their psyche so this is a difficult one so practicing observing your attraction where are the moments that you feel attracted where wh what are you feeling in your body and what is happening in the environment for you to feel that way just tracking that is already a lot it will, it will tell you a lot about your response not accepting relationships that are not bringing you anything that are not aligned with you know what you want and um befriending more available and healthy people at least if it's just that that is already a lot um, and also I just wanted to share that um, so this is more of a video for people who are interested in being in uh, you know long-term healthy relationships and I know that there's a lot of people who are simply not so you might enjoy these short interactions and you might be very happy with that and this is maybe how you're going to live your entire life and that is perfectly okay if it is not a trouble for you if you are comfortable with that and if it makes you happy and it's aligned with your beliefs of the world. Um, so let me know what you think about this video. Leave comments. Ask me questions. I'm going to try my best to answer your questions in my Q&A series and check out my course for adult children of alcoholics. If you're interested in signing up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, several sessions, all the links are below. And I will see you in my next videos.